Hi, okay. I'm Sue Davis. I'm Ed Davis. And we're from Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, we've been here just over 10 years and primarily in the Potorios area. We had some <laughs> friends uh, who had been here 20 years ago and bought land, um, planted a thousand teak trees. They wanted the forestation, reforestation visa. They built a house and a garage and we were fascinated by what they did. So when it got time for us to retire, we remembered the stories they told us about Panama and they said, here are the keys to the house, here's the keys to the car, go check it out. <laughs> so December of 2010, that's what we did. And then in February, we came back because we couldn't believe our eyes. It was so beautiful and we just wanted to confirm that this is everything we thought it was. And when we got back from that trip, we tendered our resignations and got ready to go. Sold everything we owned and packed four suitcases and came to Panama. Such a warm, welcoming bunch of people. And we're interspersed throughout all of this area, uh, as well as down in Potrillos Abajo, because this is Arriba. Um, but people next door are from the United States and people down the way are from South Africa and there are people from Wisconsin and Texas and so so a diverse community but it's we've got lots of Panamanians living around us some indigenous really great folks and everybody just gets along so well we love it here there's a little fonda down the road just a couple miles and when we first got here we found that the food was so inexpensive we seriously thought about eating there twice a day and not buying groceries. <laughs> but. Usually when we do buy groceries, we go to Price Learn. <laughs> or if we need something quick, there's several little tiendas around here that carry along, you know, a long line of products. So. Sue calls this area uh, Goldilocks land because it's not too hot and it's not too cold, it's just right. Mm -hmm. Boquete was a little cool for us and a little wetter. Uh, here it's, it's drier, uh, less humidity, but uh, the temperature is always moderate. So that's what we like about it most. Yep, S uh, between 70 and 80 degrees almost every day and night, so it doesn't vary a lot. And of course, being this close to the equator, the, the days are equidistant. I mean, it's six o'clock in the morning and six o'clock at night. Uh, got a 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of nighttime. <laughs> As we got into more house sitting, we got more animals and <laughs> to take care of, and, uh, but uh, we've had quite a range uh, of house sitting. But uh, we enjoy it very much. We started out renting uh, and the people who lived there went back to the U.S. and asked us to take care of their house while they were gone. And then we went back to the U.S. and they called us and said, we've sold to somebody else. They have agreed to let you rent. So when we came back, uh, we, we rented from them for a while, but then they decided to sell the house. So we were house sitting again. And then people in the area and our friends and, uh, and neighbors heard that we did house sitting and pet sitting. So that began uh, our, our primary adventure, just going around primarily in Potrios and a couple of times in Boquete. Um, but house sitting and pet sitting, and it's a lot of fun. You know, you get to see so many different neighborhoods and get to meet new neighbors and take care of their critters, and we like it a lot.
seldom are, do we go over to Volcano, although it's beautiful. Cerro Punta is beautiful with all those terraced gardens and vegetable gardens up and down the, the hillsides. Um, but there's so much to do and so many good shopping places in Boquete and David that we don't even think about Volcano, though it's pretty. But when our friends come here, we take them there. Yeah, to see it. <laughs> yeah. And we seriously looked at settling in Volcan, but it was uh, a little too chilly for us there and uh, a little windier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, we were up in El Banco before at the Hummingbird House where we cared for about 70 hummingbirds <laughs> who ate voraciously five pounds of sugar a day. We were feeding about every four hours. It was like having an infant, except these were little fluttery, these guys. <laughs> crazy hummingbirds, and it, it was beautiful. Probably about 15 different species, and um, they were absolutely gorgeous. So we, that was called the hummingbird house. This could be called the butterfly house. I, I've seen so many different butterflies in this area right here. Um, I think they're drawn by some of the flowers out front. I got all those. But uh, species I've never seen before. Just gorgeous. Potrius is about 2,700 feet elevation. We were at about 46, 40, uh, 42. 42. I think it's 1,800 meters, uh, Boquete. Potrios actually means little pastures. And so that's what you see around the whole area are meadows and pastures and, and farmlands. And this is very rural. Uh, this is for people who love uh, the country life. We are now campesinos. <laughs> Potrios itself, about... Four years ago, they put in sidewalks throughout the city, the village, and uh, and you know the roads. Although some of them are a little tricky to to uh, to walk on, uh, lots of people hike throughout the area. In fact, hiking is one of the best activities for us oldsters, and uh, we meet up with friends and walk with them. And early morning. Between seven and eight, it's a great time. Still nice and cool. Everybody's so friendly too. So everybody comes out and says hi, and and the dogs don't bother anybody. And the dogs that we are walking past, they're you know for the most part pretty cool, pretty chill. <laughs> uh, these horses, um, we just got to meet them when we moved in less than a month ago. Uh, Alejandra is a, a mare, and her filly, Calypso, is probably a year-old, two-year-old. I think they're Pasifinos, which means that they were uh, bred for their smooth gait. There's lots of people with Pasifinos in the area. And uh, the folks who own them are just around the corner. And, uh, you know, it's fun to have horses in the backyard, especially these two. They're so friendly. You'll notice there's no bars on the windows. Uh, we do feel very safe. There's a little more people in the neighborhood than was on the mountain. But uh, we still feel, feel safe, and everybody's so friendly here that uh, it's comfortable. Um, there's a uh, company named Rodney Direct and Rodney Moreno uh, is the founder and owner of this company. It's an emergency contact system, and he's available to tell people, uh, like emergency um, folks, where you live. If you call him on his special number and you're part of his organization, you're, you're a member, um, then he guides uh, ambulance or fire or police to your house, giving them complete directions. But he's a lot more than that. He um, 
He'll also do translation for you if you're not very good in Spanish yet. And you're talking with a policeman or a, a clerk who doesn't seem to understand you. He will uh, translate for you. And he can tell you why your water is out and what's wrong with your electrical system that you're not having electricity today. He knows about all the holidays and what's going to be happening those days or not happening. So he's a great resource for us, and we've always been part of his system. It's so inexpensive, like $90 a year. <laughs> and it, to have that peace of mind that he's available to you 24-7 right on your phone. I had an amusing thing happen to me. Uh, we were in Santa Marta, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I turned and didn't, there were no signs there, but there was a policeman right on the other side of the road where I turned on. And he wrote me a ticket for an illegal left turn. Well, Sue had already contacted Rodney, and I had Rodney on the phone. And I asked Rodney to <laughs> talk to the police officer. And Rodney talked to him for just a minute. He handed the phone back to me and said, pay the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, but I was in the wrong, so <laughs> but it was funny. <laughs> We like to go to Las Lajas. We don't get there as often as we would like to now with the dogs and everything. But uh, we love it there. It's a small resort, uh, very clean, and the, the service is excellent. And uh, the rooms are moderately priced. Uh, we, we love it there. And the beach is uh, walkable. It's not steep, uh, but uh, it's, it's a good beach, so yeah. And the little resort there, Las Lajas Beach Resort, only 12 rooms, but each room has two queen beds and a single bed, so if you've got a family, you can, uh, you can house everybody. The restaurant is terrific. Um, so that's kind of our happy place, Las Lajas. Uh, you go down to David and head toward Panama City. <laughs> it's very, pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And the road's a lot nicer now. Since years ago, they've uh, updated the Pan American Highway, so yeah. We find that a lot of things are uh, more affordable than uh, what we found when we lived in Colorado. Um, for instance, our monthly electric bill is generally under $50. Our water bill here was less than $5. Um, medical and dental is very affordable. So even people who don't have insurance can get to see a doctor for $15, a specialist for 60 And because we're older and we're on the pensionado program, we get to enjoy a lot of things for, with deep discounts. Um, automotive services are very affordable here, body work and mechanical work. So, and of course the vegetables and fruits are amazing and Roadside stands are the way to go. You can find very fresh, almost organic things there, and, and it's, um, it's not hard on the pocketbook. I think the medical care here is excellent. Um, many of these people were trained at uh, prominent universities and medical centers in the U.S., um, many of them, most of them, speak English, which is great for us. And um, we have a little medical clinic right down here in Potrillos that can handle some very minor things. If we needed any more care, it would get, we'd probably take about 35, 40 minutes to get to the hospital that we generally go to for exams and things like that. We have a doctor that we use in uh, Boquete, and she speaks some English, uh, gives a great exam, and has helped us in a couple of places when we've needed it. I had uh, tomain poisoning one time, and she knew exactly what to do, and within a matter of a day, I was up and around again. You know, it's amazing how many people don't know about Potrillos. Uh, Boquete gets a lot of play 
uh, uh, magazines and throughout the throughout the country. I think there are a lot of people from Panama City who have uh, second homes and vacation homes in Boquete area. But I think Potrillos is beginning to see some of that activity and that interest too. Primarily because it is rural and it's very quiet, no traffic, and people just love the vibe here. It seems that uh, the houses we've seen in Boquete, and a couple of them we've house set, uh, were close to the U.S. prices of, of housing. Mm -hmm. And uh, here in Puerto Rios, uh, the house we just came from sold for less than 200000 And uh, it was a two-bedroom, two-bath house with uh, a couple hectares. And uh, it's, uh, it was a two-story house. With terraces but, uh, and wraparound windows. and Yeah, uh, very affordable. So. And fabulous views. Yeah of the ocean. You could see the ocean from there. Primary challenge is the language. Although, um, even if you don't speak Spanish fluently, uh, Panamanians really appreciate your making the effort. And they're very, they're very kind and very patient. And uh, even if you don't use the grammar correctly, they, they won't generally correct you. And uh, so that was a challenge. So I would say if you're, if you're planning to move to a country where you've got a, a different language, spend some time before you get here to really learn the language. And then hang out with, with uh, people in the area so that you're practicing your language frequently. Yeah, it's a it's a safe city, uh, and it it suits our our living. I uh, the city we came from went from uh, what sixty thousand when we first moved there to almost two hundred thousand, and the traffic was just bumper to bumper. And uh, but uh, it's one of those cities in Colorado that they suggest you retire to, but. I like Puerto Rios better. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, we're within walking distance of friends who have um, free-range eggs, free-range chickens, and and their eggs are fabulous. They feed them special greens, and um, they also have a greenhouse. It's called Global Food Providers, and they um, they raise greens and then dehydrate them and powderize them and make them available to um, widows and to children, uh, orphans. So it's an outreach program for them. And, um, and then right around the corner is our church. So we're within walking distance of our church. It's a home church. And so we've got everything right at our fingertips. Pretty cool. Well, that's one of the main reasons I was glad we left Colorado. After uh, one weekend, uh, it was a year or two before we left, it snowed 31 inches. I didn't get to do anything that weekend except shovel snow. <laughs> so, but, uh, I think we even have a photo of it. Yeah, it's so mild here that uh, you know it's uh, pretty much the same temperatures during the rainy season or during the dry season. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we love it here. There are lots of activities in Potrios and Boquete uh, that deal with charities. And some that, one that we belong to is Buenos Vecinos de Boquete, but they serve the Potrios area as well as the Boquete area. And uh, providing um, families who are in, uh, who have food scarcity, families who are supporting handicapped kids or adults, we provide them with non-perishable food every month. Uh, we get together and put the food, food baskets together and then deliver the food to many of our clients. So we get to see these clients and interact with them. And some of us have been dealing with the same families for five, six years. So we've watched their children grow, really connected with them. But there are lots of activities and charities like that. 
people who love dogs uh, and cats, um, Amigos de Animales in Boquete. There are plenty of people here who take part in their monthly program uh, of spaying and neutering dogs and cats at very affordable prices. And uh, there are cat refuge and dog camp that rescues primarily dogs. And um, so there's a lot to do and a lot of things that people can be involved with. Uh, in 2012, uh, we had an opportunity to go see our kids in Germany. Our son was uh, with the Air Force at that time. And so we went to Germany, spent a little time there, and then uh, went to Paris. And then we spent almost a month in Italy, which was absolutely fabulous. Um, Florence and Rome and Sorrento and Siena and Cinque Terre, uh, really beautiful places. Um, then some friends of ours, uh, Pastor and his wife, uh, were retiring and they wanted to go back to Ecuador, to Quito specifically, where they had done um, work with the uh, Wycliffe translating um, program 25 years ago. And so they asked us to come with them and we did. It was great fun. It was so beautiful. Ecuador is, um, you know, the Andes are so amazing. They make our little Volcan Baru look kind of tiny. But um, so we went in September and there were still, there were already snow-capped mountains. We traveled to a beautiful city called... Cotacachi. Cotacachi. Yeah. And um, right nestled in this valley with the Andes around it. And it's a very touristy town in some ways. And in some ways, it reminds us of Potrillos, too, though. The, the people there, the expats, are very um, close to one another and do a lot of activities together. And um, the town was beautifully organized and well laid out, very clean. Somebody goes through the whole town and washes down the, the streets every day. So, But the whole culture in Ecuador was lovely. Lots of fresh vegetables and lots of handicrafts and it was an amazing place. But we like, we like it here better than Cotacachi. We like Panama better than Ecuador. Um, I think it's a, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous country. We love it here.